ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اجمعين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله بنعمة الله سبحانه وتعالى by the grace and fadl of Allah سبحانه وتعالى اللهم بلغنا شهر رمضان we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to allow us to reach the last month of Ramadan and no doubt alhamdulillah if Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant us and allow us to live until next week hopefully we will be in the blessed month of Ramadan looking around about the yawm al-khamis which is corresponding with Thursday in the Jordanian calendar which is the 23rd day of the month in the Jordanian calendar which is March bi idnillah ta'ala we will begin the Ramadan and no doubt the correct way it's not about the date it's more so about the ru'at al-hilal the sighting of the crescent walhamdulillah or the completing of the actual days by the permission of Allah jalla wa ala nonetheless we wanted to give a brief reminder bi idnillah of the three pillars of ramadan okay the thalathatu arkan the three pillars of ramadan ma hiya what are they what are the three pillars of ramadan in Ramadan, there are three main things that uh, the Muslim is encouraged, advised um, throughout the Kitab and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam to concentrate and focus on in the month of Ramadan. And the first of the pillar is al siyam Siyam, which is fasting, um, is something that is obligatory in this month, which is not optional. It is actually obligatory for everyone um, that is mukallif um, and does not have a legal excuse by the sharia to um, forego this obligation and to do an expiation such as feeding someone etc like a pregnant woman or someone who is breastfeeding or someone who is rendered an elder or age or someone who have a chronological illness where it doesn't allow them to fast etc etc so the first pillar being as siyam as Allah Jalla wa Ala, He tells us in His beautiful book, He says, "Ya ayyuha ladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la alakum a tatqoon." Okay. So Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says in this beautiful verse, the verse that we should become familiar with throughout the month of Ramadan, we should hear it being recited a lot. Is in Surah Al Baqarah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you, meaning decreed for you, as it has been decreed for those who came before you, in order that you may gain taqwa. Iman Sa'di, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, or Iman Sa'di, Kilahuma Sahih, both ways of pronouncing it is correct. He mentions in his tafsir of this tremendous verse, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of the favors which he has bestowed upon his servants whereas he has obligated upon them to fast to fast during this month just as he had obligated upon the previous nations because it is from the shara'in it is from the legislations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has made as a rectification for the creation in every time Okay, he says also it contains within it an encouragement for this ummah, meaning the ummah of Muhammad وسلم, the Muslim specifically, that they be, that is befitting for them that they يعني, put the effort, that they haste, put the effort into doing what? Right? تنافسوا, that they race and they put the effort in, then other than you. In regards to completing these actions, and they hasten to do the righteous, um, or to do the righteous actions which they are commanded to do. And it is not from the affairs which are a burden or is difficult upon them to carry out. 
Then Allah Jalla wa'ala at the end of the verse, Iman Sa'adi informs us that he explains to us the wisdom behind him legislating the fast as an obligation upon us because Allah says, La allukum e tatakun. And the Shaykh says here, indeed fasting, it is from the greatest of means of a one ascertaining or achieving taqwa. If you want to know how you become more pious or how to, uh, to ascertain some type of taqwa, all you have to do is fast correctly. Fast according to the sunnah, fast in both of the ways. Some people don't understand that you can fast linguistically and still not reap the benefits of fasting. And you can also fast يعني, just uh, physically and still not reap the full or maximum benefits of fasting. But you want to fast both spiritually and physically ta'ala, to reap the maximum benefits of fasting. And so for you, what I'm saying is fasting linguistically is just to refrain from speaking. All right. As we know, Allah Jalla wa'ala tells us and he mentions what Maryam mentions uh, to the angels. Inni nazaratu, indeed I have taken a vow, lil-Rahmani, right? Fala tu kalima insan, that not to speak to any man, right? I have taken a vow, a soulman, I have taken a, a vow, right? To fast, in here linguistically, in the language, it meant not to speak to a person. So she refrained from speech, all right? But to fast physically, it's just, you know, just refraining from food, eat, drink, and pleasure, all right? But the maximum benefit is to also refrain from the spiritual things and the things that will harm you, such as backbiting, such as tail carrying, such as um, uh, spreading harm, thievery, such as foul language, such as um, Ill, be, Ill repute behavior, uh, and so forth and so on. Those things which you ain't supposed to engage in, whether with your hands, or whether with your ears, or whether with your tongue, etc., etc. All of these things you want to stay away from to ascertain. At taqwa And Ibn Sa'adi says Siyam fasting is from the greatest of the means Of ascertaining it He says because it contains within it The compliance to the command of Allah And to refrain from those with things Which he has prohibited you from And from the things that it contains Or it comprises of from taqwa Is that the fasting person leaves off those things which Allah has made impermissible upon him, such as eating during a certain time frame, which is during the daytime, drinking and having relations, and similar to that. That which um, his self or herself were inclined towards. They would do these things and refrain from these things to seek a nearness by way of leaving those things off to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hoping by leaving off those things, they will be able um, to, uh, by leaving off things, to be able to ascertain Allah's reward. Which reminds me of a tremendous hadith from Abu Hurairah, which is collected by both Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet وسلم, he says, Man sama Ramadan. Iman in Wahti Sabin Gufir Allahu Matakadam and Tempi Woman Kama Ramadan Iman in Wahti Sabin Gufir Allahu Matakadam and Tempi Woman Kama Layla Til Kadr Nam Iman in Wahti Sabin Gufir Allahu Matakadam and Tempi Al Hadith in Bukhari wa Muslim The Prophet he says Whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan out of Iman the belief in Allah Jalla wa ala, and hoping to ascertain Allah's reward which is the shahid here hoping to ascertain as Iman Sa'di said Raji'an bi tarakiha a right thawabu meaning that he hoped by leaving it off he would ascertain Allah's reward here in the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu said whoever fasts with the Iman in Allah Jalla wa Ala and the hope, okay, Wahti Sabin, he hopes for the reward for doing so, he will have his previous sins forgiven. And then he says also, whoever stands, meaning make salat, whoever prays, the tarawiyah, all right, the late uh, the salat al layl, whoever stands, not just the obligatory salats, but also the tarawiyah, whoever stands, yani, will also what? Have out of iman. And the hope for the reward will have his or her sins forgiven, the previous sins forgiven. And then he said, whoever 
um, prays, I will catch Layla to Qatar. All right, whoever stands to catch Layla to Qatar, etc. The same reward will happen. So, taking that in consideration, we see how tremendous the fact of belief plays an integral role with the action being accepted, as well as hoping for the reward of Allah Jalla wa Alam. Now, okay, so the first of the pillars of Ramadan is fasting. And there are things that must take place when a person fasts. So the Shaykh he says, Fahada min taqwa. Alright? This is from taqwa when a person refrains from those things which Allah has prohibited from eating, drinking, and having relation is similar to that. Alright? And he says also the fasting person, Yadrubu Natsahu ala maraqa bitalahi ta'ala, that he trains his or herself to be conscious and aware that Allah is observing him or her. See, during that time, you are becoming more aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing you, that Allah sees you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness you, okay? And by you being aware of that, you, you become conscious, right? Which is reaching the little level of being a muhsin, okay? It's more deeper than that, but still, you get a little bit of taste of it. He says, um, so the person leaves off because of this awareness and knowing that Allah is deserving them. He or she leaves off those things which their soul inclines to from their desires. Even though they have the ability to do those said desires, they leave them off anyway, right? This here, he says, the Shaykh, he says, this because he know Allah is watching it. This is also from taqwa. Likewise, the siyamu yudiku mujar shaitan that also fasting it what? It it tightens, right? It tightens up to what? The flow of the shaitan through the veins, as we know the Prophet mentioned. For in who yajuri min ibn Adam, mentioned the dam. The Prophet mentioned how the shaitan flowed through the veins of Ibn of the son of Adam, just like the blood flowed through the veins. So fasting tightens that up. Alright? It strains, it restricts it. Okay? He says also. Therefore, the fast weakens the effect that the shaitan will have on the servant. All right. Also, it causes the servant to sin less. Not that the person doesn't sin at all, but it causes the servant to sin less. Okay. And also, he mentions, And usually in the case when the person is fasting, it allows them to be more obedient to carry out the acts of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? And he says, وَمِنْهَا also وَطَاعَاتُ مِنْ خِصَالُ taqwa." And we know that the acts of obedience are from the characteristics of a person having piety, taqwa. Also from it is that الْغَنِيَ إِذَا ذَاكُ عَلَمْ جُعْ أَوْجَبَ لَهُ ذَلِكَ مُوَاسَةُ الْفُقَرَاءُ um, so we know that the person who Say for example who is enriched or was well off Or was wealthy When they taste some of this hunger Then they are able to be more sympathetic And more understanding of those who are less fortunate than them Such as the people who are poor Alright And those who are destitute And doesn't have They are able to, able to show more compassion towards them Because they are experiencing some of the things That they experience as far as the hunger pains And such forth When they fast Alhamdulillah. All right. And we see that's a beautiful thing. So the second pillar. So we have the first pillar is fasting. The second pillar in the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is Qiyam. Okay. It's Qiyam. And we mentioned the hadith earlier about the Prophet وسلم, saying, Man qama Ramadan iman wa ahtisab. Whoever stands, meaning pray, yani, during the month of Ramadan. And he's talking about the tarawiyah, uh, the qiyamul layl, whoever prays. Standing is also one of those things that the Muslim is highly encouraged and recommended to stand. And that there is no set limit that the Messenger of Allah is authentically reported to have placed upon the person of standing. When the Prophet was asked in the famous hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, right, when he asked him how the night prayer is to be performed, Meaning, what does the night prayer consist of? The Prophet said, Mathna, Mathna. He mentioned two, two, walam yuhaddid. As the ulama mentioned, he did not place any restrictions. And he says that you make the last one a odd one, a witter. Ja'ala, right? Autara. You make it a witter, okay? All right, you make the last one a witter. 
But nonetheless, you can do two, two, two. So if a person wants to pray 98 rock odds and end it with the 99, there is no one who can censor them from the deen that they are doing something that is incorrect. La. Just like if a person wants to pray 43, 42, all right, and he meth not, and then he ends with the, uh, the, the, um, the third one. I mean, 43, no one actually can censor them and say, you know, you're doing something incorrect, right? Because there is no set limit within the deen for a person to do so, all right? And I know people always say, well, I want to stick to the sunnah. But Sheikh Fuzan, I feel the whole law, he brought a beautiful point for those people who, you know, want to clinch, and they say fanatically to the hadith of our mother, Aisha, rather, anha, when asked how many raka'ahs did the Prophet Wasallam perform and the prayer, and it comes in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, they mentioned that the Prophet Wasallam, Aisha, said that he prayed no more than 11, and if you add the two, then it would, the two of the Sunnah, then it would make up to 13, right? Some of the people, especially people who are saying they're diligent upon the Sunnah, they said, we pray only 11 raka'ahs, right? So Sheikh Fuzan said, okay, if you're going to be adamant and you're going to stick to just the 11, then pray them the same way the Prophet ﷺ prayed. Because in that same hadith, she describes the Prophet ﷺ, his bawling. She said that the length of his bawling was the same length of his standing. So imagine if the Prophet ﷺ recites slow, as we get in many different narrations. He recites slow. He don't recite fast. He recites slow. So imagine him reciting Baqa, Ali Imran, all right, which are the longest of the sores, right, of the, in the Quran, in one rakat, just for example, are your is your bawling going to be the length of Baqarah and Ali Imran? Not only that, Sheikh Fuzan continues from the Hadith of Aisha. She said that his sujood, his prostration, was the length of his rukur, his bawling. So if you're going to stick to the number. Sheikh Fuzan is saying, if you're going to stick and say, I'm only going to pray 11, then do it the same way the Prophet did. That will be sticking to the Toru Sunnah. But if you're not going to be able to, to carry that out, then you shouldn't be so adamant to say that someone who doesn't stick to that 11, they're, they're, they're not actually praying according to the Sunnah. I just wanted to bring that point up because sometimes some issues during Ramadan, some people get a little hasty in their hearts when they go into certain massages and they see that they're praying 23 for example or they're praying 43 and they think they're upon bid'ah they're not upon bid'ah there's no set limit of the night prayer of how many rakahs to be performed it's just known to be only to be in with an odd number walhamdulillah all right so the second one is no doubt is praying so you're going to pray a lot in this month you're going to pray a lot in this month also what comes along with praying wudu we know there are many merits of wudu. And one of the things of the merits from the wudu is that it wipes away a person's sins. Not any minor sins, not major. Just like the hadith we mentioned earlier. That is the minor sins, not major. Alright? Gufr Allahu ma taqaddam in dhambi. That it forgives all of the sins that was, um, what meaning? The ulama, they say the minor sins, not the major sins. Okay? <clears throat> Type. The third pillar of Ramadan is a tilawa. It's tilawa. Allah Jalla Wa'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Huda lil-nasi wa bayyinati min al-huda wal-furqan al-ayah. In this beautiful verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to know that the month of Ramadan wherein the Qur'an was revealed. And we know from the sunnah that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa during his last Ramadan, he will recite the Qur'an twice. Over Jibreel Ali Salam, and he recited more than anything. So Tilawa reciting the Book of Allah, you should read the Book of Allah often. There were many scholars of the past and from the Imams, such as Imam Shafi'i, as well as Imam Malik, that they will leave off anything, no hadith, no classes or anything else. They will focus and concentrate on the Book of Allah during the month of Ramadan. You want to become familiar with that book. You want to take pride in reciting that book from front to back. Reciting that book. There are many different programs out there that you can find that are available and accessible on the internet that will show you how to break down the Quran. It consists of 30 parts, which is known as a juts, 30 ajazas. All right, you can read it. The Sahabas, they had a certain way of how they would complete the Quran in 15 days, how they complete it in seven days, how they would complete it in three days. You have it, or how you can complete it in 30 days. So those regiments are out there for you. 
But I re recommend that you, brothers and sisters, focus on reading the Book of Allah. If you can't read the Arabic, you have not gotten to that experience of reading the Arabic yet, get you the most closest thing to it, which will be a noble, where you get the translation of the meaning, because um, you get some hadith in there, and also get you some tafsirs, some authentic tafsirs, not no weird space out tafsirs. The most safest ones you can get is like Ibn Kathir. All right, and it's in English, alhamdulillah, or even Saudi is also in English as well. And you get your hands on some of them and you read them by the permission of Allah. If you can't read the Arabic, okay, read the Quran. Make this month about the Quran for you, brothers and sisters. We will be reading on our page, which is the Delhi Quran reading. We will read a juts a day, be it in the ta'ala, only with permission of Allah, so that by the 30th day of Ramadan, we will complete, or the 29th day if it is, we will have completed. Complete the book of Allah as a That is our plan. We also have for class schedule on the Mahat will be understanding Yani Kaifa Tafham Surah Baqarah. Where we will be focusing on Baqarah only. We will not be doing any other classes um, in the month of Ramadan. All will be about the Quran. So again, the three pillars of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is the first is being Siyam, fasting, which is an obligation. And the second is being Qiyam, which is standing. And the third is which is Tilawa. These are the three main things you want to focus on in this beautiful month. Okay? These are the three main things you want to focus on. You want to make sure you fast. Because without fasting, you would uh, fortify the obligation of Ramadan. You want to make sure you pray. Because there's no point in fasting and not praying. So you want to make sure you pray. And a lot of things you have to take into consideration. Any habit that you had prior to Ramadan that will prevent you from praying or your prayer from being accepted, leave it off. All right? That's smoking, whatever, drinking, whatever. Leave those things off because they hindered the prayer from being accepted. Leave them off. Anything that would deter the prayer from being accepted, you want to stay far away from it in this blessed month. All right? To reap the benefit of this blessed month. Also, you want to, inshallah ta'ala, you can stand with the imam. And if you, for those who know Quran, and you, you be home, inshallah ta'ala, you can pray in your home. It's not obligatory that you have to pray tarawiyah in the masjid. It's not a sin only if you don't pray tarawiyah in the masjid. But if you're a person who doesn't, who can't read the Quran, then I will encourage you to go to the masjid to pray along with the Muslims, even if it's some rakats or it's not all of the rakats that they pray, then inshallah ta'ala, you will get some of the benefits of standing in the prayer for tarawiyah, all right? And if you're a person who can read the Quran, you're a person who has some Quran, then you can pray and lead your family in the prayer at home. It's not it's not a sin if you pray home tarawiyah, all right? That's not a sin, okay? Um, it's not the same as the Dali prayers for the men because that's an obligation and the Hadith makes that clear. And last and not least, recite much you can. Recite constantly the Book of Allah. Go over it, recite it, go over it, and go over it. That's what I want to advise the people. So these are the things that you should focus. Have your checklist. Get ready, inshallah ta'ala. Yom al-Khamis. We're looking out, inshallah ta'ala, for the sighting of the, uh, of, of the crescent. And hopefully by Thursday, which is the Jordanian calendar, next week, inshallah, may Allah allow us to reach it, we will be fasting. That would mean the first night of total wheel will proceed, which will start on Wednesday. That night will be the first night. If Thursday, Yom Kamis will be the first day of fasting by the permission of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Where we said that incorrect in our translation was definitely from our Salah Shaykh Tom. Where we correct us from Allah Jalla wa Ala. Subhanak Allahum bihamdik ashhad wa la ilaha and astaghfiru wa tuwa ilaik. Jazakallah khairim. From tuning in as always, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.